Hey guys, Probable 1701 here, and today we're going to talk about the invasion of time with the updated effects from the DVD release. I, of course, finally have my season 15 box set, and the updated effects from the DVD releases from that season have been carried over. And this is the first time I've been able to watch the story all the way through with the updated effects. Now, I've seen clips of the updated effects on YouTube comparing to the original effects, but I've never just watched the story with the updated effects. And they do help it, um, most notably on the Vardens. Of course, the Vardens in the original version are just that tenfold look really hurts the episode. Uh, the Invasion of Time is famous for the budget having run out. It shows in the production in all sorts of places, the TARDIS interiors, uh, the special effects for the lasers, just the special effects in general, the Vardens. Uh, so the updated effect for the Vardens looks really good with them kind of being glowing humanoids now. They kind of look like the light creatures from Spyfall, actually, to be honest. Uh, I much like that updated effect. Some of the little things I enjoy, the crown floating up, the crown on Tom's head kind of glowing. Uh, those are fine. Uh, I do like the updated laser effects from the guards' guns. And the fact they match the laser effects uh, from the guards' guns in Arkham Infinity... I like that a lot. There's a nice continuity there with the way the updated effects of those look. As the original effects were not very pleasing with the laser blast. And you guys know Prowley likes him some updated laser blast. That's a big deal for me. I like good looking laser blast in my classic Doctor Who. Um, so I enjoyed that. Little things, the, uh, the main disintegrator gun the updated effects for that yes i like those too even if it does make everything perhaps a little too bright but i enjoy that as well uh and then there's other little moments like the i like the fact that they didn't replace the model work with cgi they just kind of added to the model work a little like the engine blast and stuff because the model work looks really good the actual model work we don't get much of it but the little bit of model work you get with the ships looks pretty good actually and so I like that they just kind of enhanced that a little bit, like the engine blast and stuff. And I, I, I think that's a nice little touch and all it really needed. Um, so, yeah, I enjoy that. Uh, I think K-9 probably got some improvements on his laser blast. I didn't, wasn't really paying attention. The Suntarans, of course, have some improvements on their laser blast, which look good. Uh, so I enjoy the updated effects. There weren't as many as I thought there would be. And, or that's they were just more minor and flow with the story, so I wasn't just constantly going, ah. Uh, the story itself doesn't do much for me. It doesn't really make sense. The Doctor has to put Gallifrey in danger just to send them back to their home planet because they can read his mind. It, the, the story seems more complicated than it needs to be, I'll be honest. The Vardens never feel threatening, and when they materialize in humans in those the most generic-looking space uniforms ever, they really don't feel intimidating at all. The performances from them don't feel intimidating. Now, the episode four cliffhanger is great. When the Suntarans show up, it's a nice little twist. I, again, even though it's not written by Bob Holmes, it has that Bob Holmes 4-2 punch to it where... Four episodes are dedicated to one thing and two episodes are dedicated to another that Bob Holmes really liked to do with six-parters. So it has that feel to it, uh, even though he didn't write it. Um, I do love that iconic cliffhanger, though, with the Suntarans just being there and the one pulling out his gun. Uh, that's pretty cool. The TARDIS interior scenes, honestly, did not bother me like they normally do. I've only watched Invasion of Time a couple times. Um... It's not one I've seen a lot, and but that's always been a complaint is the TARDIS interiors look ridiculous because of budget, but they really don't to me, especially considering it's Tom's Doctor. I could see Tom's Doctor having an interior TARDIS like this. Now, it doesn't quite work from a continuity standpoint because we've seen him walking around the TARDIS interior before, like in The Mask of Mandragora briefly and um, <clears throat> in, what, Legopolis, I think, in parts. And, of course, Peter is at the beginning of Castrovalva, where it looks more like the traditional classic TARDIS interior, which very much looks like a studio set. So, I actually... So, while the continuity is not necessarily there, I like... One, I like the location footage. It looks really good. It's not HD, by the way. I know a lot of people have commented on, since some of the film sequences exist, 
they're looking forward to seeing it in HD. It's not, it is the scan they did a few years ago for the DVD. Uh, they did use that. Peter Crocker did an interview on one of the podcasts. And the uh, the film, when they did the scan for the DVD, the film had faded that they had to fix it. And they were pretty sure in the 10 or 15 years since then, the film had probably faded more because it wasn't kept as cold as it probably needed to be to prevent that. So instead of going back to rescan the footage in HD, they just took the scan they did in standard definition and cleaned that up. So that is in standard definition, that, that footage. They used the old scan. But it still looks great. Like, it looks really, really good, the uh, footage. I mean, I don't actually know which film footage that was, but I'm assuming it's TARDIS interior scenes. It looks good, though. The TARDIS interior scenes look really good. You can tell it's film. I tend to love when Doctor Who is shot on film in Classic Who. It just looks so good, usually. Um, especially when it's a scan taken from the film uh, elements. That looked really good. And for some reason, it just fits Tom's Doctor to have a wacky TARDIS that looks like... I don't know. For, for some reason, it did not bother me at all. I was loving it. I, it makes no sense. But I was enjoying it. It fit Tom. Like other Doctors, it wouldn't work. Like John, it wouldn't work. But for Tom, it works. And for the fourth Doctor... It works. I can believe him having a TARDIS that looks like that. It's nice to see the swimming pool in the TARDIS that we always hear about. Um, I don't care for the Suntaran makeup a lot. Uh, I just wish the guy had kept his helmet on more. Also, the ending when he's trying to blow up everything with a grenade kind of comes out of everywhere. I don't know why he just gives up. I guess he realizes it's... I don't know. It just it kind of seemed out of place and like, oh, that's happening. Okay. Um, again, it seems a little more complicated than it needs to be. I love the guy playing Barusa in this. Uh, it's hard for me to pick between him and the guy playing Barusa and Five Doctors. I love them both. I mean, I always like to see Barusa in all of his stories, but, uh, this could be my favorite Barusa. I really like the actor playing him. The guy playing the Castellan in this too, I like Milton, I think. Uh, he's really good. Of course, he's in other Doctor Who stories. I, I think he's an enemy of the world. I know he's also in um, The Android Invasion. He's always good when he shows up. And I love how he plays the Castellan as this kind of weaselly, subservient character with dreams of grandeur. You know, someone who is very obviously submissive and subservient, but who wants to be the leader and the master. Um, it was very much this, but wants to be this. He plays that part so well. What he does with his body language when he's hunched over his shoulders and kind of complicit, he does a lot with his body language to to convey exactly how his character is. And I, I love just that awareness of physically what he's doing as an actor with his face and with his body language is really well done. And how he keeps... He keeps obeying whatever side he thinks, you know, of, of the toast is buttered the best, if that makes sense. You know, first he's willing to do whatever the Doctor wants, then whatever the Vardens want, then whatever the Doctors want, then whatever the Suntarans want. I love all of that. I really, really do. Uh, he's just really good in that role. Really, really good in that role. Uh, the Leela exit, of course, is terrible. We're not going to even go into that. It's just, it's bad. It's just, it's one of the worst companion exits. It's really bad and very out of character for Leela. The guy playing <clears throat> the captain that she ends up with is fine. I mean, he doesn't really jump out, but he's good. I liked him well enough. He's not anything stellar like the other two I just named, but he's he's fine. I don't think he has really a lot to work with, honestly, but he, he does the best of what he can. Tom's good in this. He gets to do some interesting things in this. He has some humorous moments, some very angry moments, some very out-of-character moments because he's having to basically play a part. Not Tom playing a part. The fourth Doctor is actually having to kind of play a part here in part of this. So it's, it's nice to see the range of stuff he has to do. Some of the sets actually come off looking pretty neat, like the, the lead-lined room with all the cogs looks really impressive. I actually think they do a pretty good job with Gallifrey here, um, considering the budget issues. It actually comes off pretty well set-wise. It's more the story I have issues with. The updated effects help it, especially with the Vardens. They really do. And, of course, the updated laser blast. But just the story just doesn't really grab me. I, oh, also, when they're on Gallifrey, I do love the fact we get the autumn sky. I like the fact they were able to do the autumn sky. That was also a really nice touch. Um, so, yeah, uh, 
mixed bag. Watchable, perfectly watchable, but a mixed bag for sure, but definitely better with the updated effects. So, the invasion of time with the updated effects. What do you think of it? Do you prefer it with the updated effects or the original effects? Comment down below and let me know. Don't forget to click the like button and the subscribe button and the bell for notifications as well. I also have a link to my Patreon if you would like to support me on that. There's also links to my Amazon wish list down below and links to my Amazon UK wish list, which I've updated recently with some stuff I'd like if you want to check either of those out. My P.O. box is down there if you'd like to send anything directly. I want to give a shout out to some of my top tier patrons, Stephen Crane, Colin Coney, and Finn Perkins. I appreciate their support as I do the support of all of my patrons. YouTube memberships are also available. Most importantly, thank you for watching. Thank you.